Hi everyone, this is the video lesson for 4.5, an algorithm for curve sketching part 4. If you haven't watched the first part, which we talked about the warm up, the second part, which we went through example 1a, and part 3, which we talked about example 1b, please go back and watch them. Really important you do this in sequence before continuing with example 1c. Now, f of x equals to x minus 4 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. Normally, the first step is you start with the domain. And again, I am going to continue with the domain. However, I'm going to take a half a step back. So if you really watch the warm-up, I kind of mentioned that you don't always do all these functions in the same exact sequence. It depends on what the function is, and sometimes you do it in a certain way. So in the warm-up, I also mentioned that for the domain, you've got to be aware of any vertical asymptotes. So I'm taking half a step back. Before I write down the domain, I'm going to find the three possible asymptotes. Now, if you look at the denominator, x squared minus x minus 2 cannot be 0. And again, through simple factoring, you can tell that x squared minus x minus 2 could be factored as x minus 2 times x plus 1, which means x cannot be 2 and it cannot be negative 1. So this means x equals to 2 and negative 1 for the vertical asymptotes. Now we can go back to the domain. x is an element of real numbers such that x cannot be 2 and x cannot be negative 1. Now, since I did vertical asymptotes, let's finish horizontal and oblique. So by inspection, the exponent at the top is exactly one larger than the bottom. This means there is a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0, which implies there are no oblique asymptotes. Really important, you graph as you go. So I'm starting with the vertical asymptotes x equal to negative 1, x equal to 2. Likewise, there's the horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. Again, before I keep going, just be mindful. It is impossible for a function to cross the vertical asymptote because y cannot equal to x. Right? x is the vertical asymptote, y is the function. This will not happen. However, it is possible that the function may cross the oblique or the horizontal asymptote because when you make them equal, you can find the intersection of the function and the corresponding asymptotes. So let's continue. Now, once we went through the domain and we kind of skip all the way to the asymptote, I'm going back to the intercepts. So again, let's divide this into two columns to keep everything organized. To find the intercepts, again, you can create a table in the first column, x-intercept, in the second column, the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you have to set y to be 0. You're solving for x. The only part that matters is the numerator, which means x minus 4 is going to be 0, or x equals to 4. Again form the habit of finding the location of the intercept, 4, 0. And I'm going to come back to this and graph it once I finish the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept again, you do the opposite. You're going to set x to be 0 and solve for y. So in this case, y equals to negative 4 divided by negative 2. So y is going to be 2. Again, find the location. 0, 2. So I'm going back to the graph and I'm going to update it with the intercepts. So 4, 0 is going to be the x-intercept and 0, 2 is going to be the y-intercept, just like that. Let's keep going. Now that we found the domain, the intercepts and the asymptotes, we're going to keep going and find critical points and the interval of increase and decrease. So 
Again, I hope you remember your quotient rule because we're going to apply that right now. So f of x is going to be x minus 4 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. So when you find the derivative, the first step is you square the bottom. So x squared minus x minus 2 quantity squared. Step 2 is to copy the bottom to the top. The third step is to multiply by the derivative of x minus 4, which is 1, minus, you copy the top, then you multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x minus 1. Again, to find critical point or points, your goal is to dismiss the denominator. I mean, again, you do want to look for the function where, you know, or the x value where f prime is going to be undefined or does not exist. But we already know from the first part that uh, those were the vertical asymptotes. That's why you can dismiss them. And now, if you only look at the top and you set it to 0, 0 equals to x squared minus x minus 2. If we expand this, that's going to be negative 2x squared plus x plus 8x minus 4. So hope you're connected in terms of the mental math. If we clean this up, that's going to be negative x squared. You can cross that out. You can cross negative and positive x out as well. Plus 8x minus 6. And again, you can factor negative 1 at the front. And um, to find x, you have to apply the quadratic formula. So let's do it here. Let's erase that. So x equals to negative b. In this case, it's going to be a plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. And again, you can take your calculator. <clears throat> when you work it out, it's approximately 7.2 and 0 0.8. Again, form the habit, find the exact location of the critical points. So one point is going to be approximately 7.2. You plug it back into the function. Y is going to be 0 0.1. Make sure you verify this. Don't just believe me. Find out the truth for yourself. If you plug in 0 0.8, the corresponding Y value should be 1.5. And again, go back to the graph and label these points. So 0 0.8, 1.5 is going to be approximately there. And even by inspection, you can tell that it looks like a minimum. And we'll confirm it in a moment. The other point is 7.1, 0 0.1. So I'm extending the graph a little bit. So you can see 7.1, so 6 and 7. So 7.1 and 0 0.1 is going to be somewhere here. So again, 7.1, 0 0.1, just like that. Now, let's keep going. Oh, sorry, not 7.1. I found 7.2. Let's go back. Let's try again. 7.2 or 7.1, depending on the rounding. But you get the idea. Now, I'm going to continue. To find the intervals of increase and decrease, this is a little bit different now. It's no longer just the critical points. You also have to look at the vertical asymptotes. So even though we found two critical points, but there are also two vertical asymptotes. So there'll be four anchor points in this case. And again, the vertical asymptotes were at negative 1 and 2. The critical points were 0 0.8 and 7.2 approximately. Now this time, you really got to go back and plug in those numbers. So, you know, when x is less than negative 1, when x is in between negative 1 and 0 0.8, when it's in between 0 0.8 and 2, in between 2 and 7.2, and when it's greater than 7.2. So again, you can press pause, take the calculator, try it. When you press play, I'll be right here. Okay, 
Now, if we work it out, the interval of increase is going to be when x is in between 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 and 2, when it's between 2 and 7.2. And everywhere else, with the exception of the anchor points, it's going to be negative. And you can verify this. I hope you verified this. You're not just copying it down without confirming it on your own. So again, IOI, interval of increase, is when x is between 0 0.8 and 2, or when x is in between 2 and 7.2. Interval of decrease is when it's less than negative 1, it's when it's in between negative 1 and 0 0.8, when it's greater than 7.2. Now, let's keep going. To find the points of inflection, you have to find the second derivative. And again, we know the first derivative is negative x squared plus 8x minus 6 divided by x squared minus x minus 2 quantity squared. So when you find a second derivative, again, you apply the quotient rule. You have to square the bottom. You copy the bottom to the top. You multiply by the derivative of the top, which is negative 2x plus 8 minus. You copy the top, and you multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 2 times x squared minus x minus 2 times 2x minus 1. So again, you're applying the chain rule inside the quotient rule. By now, you get the idea. You do want to set this to 0, and you do want to look at the denominator. But like, as I said from before, those are vertical asymptotes. So you can dismiss them. And now, when you solve for x, look what happens. Again, you're finding the point of inflection, which may or may not exist. So if you solve this, I believe there is an x value, and this I'll leave to you to try because I really want to make sure that I get this under 15 minutes, uh, but you do want to expand this, collect like terms, try to solve it, and I think when you solve this, you will get an x value somewhere here. So maybe you can comment below in the video to see if you can find it, and then I'll kind of continue there. So that's going to be your inflection point. And of course, the goal is how can I combine increasing, decreasing with concavity? So again, you've got to find the uh, concavity first. And the divider, in this case, <clears throat> is going to be the vertical asymptotes. Again, you plug it back in into y double prime, and you would discover that it would be concave down, concave up, and concave down. So after you hit this inflection point, which you can comment below, you can solve it. This is going to be x. This x is the inflection point, which I'm asking you to try on your own. It's going to be concave up again. So now, when you put it all together, what happens? Let's draw this number line again. There are going to be many anchor points in this case. So again, you start with uh, negative 1. Then there's the potential minimum, second vertical asymptote, second potential maximum at the last point. So it's going to be negative 1. It's going to be 0 0.8. It's going to be 2. It's going to be 7.2. And this point, which I want to make sure you can try on your own. Now again. If you look at this, you go back and you copy it, right? So we know the increase and decrease, which means <clears throat> this is going to be decreasing, decreasing, increasing, increasing. Then it's going to continue to decrease and decrease. In terms of concavity, it's going to be concave down, concave up, concave up concave down and after 7.1 or approximately 7.2 it's going to be concave down and if you get it correctly with the new point if defined it's going to concave up so again when you combine them it's concave down decreasing or look something like that concave